Hi, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a while. It's really nice to be to see everybody again. Hi, what's up? So welcome back to my channel. Like I said, I know it's been a while. I've just been it's just been crazy the past couple of months and have been um, also dealing with like an increase in business. So I wanted to say thank you so much for uh, anybody that has called and also have wanted to work with me over the past year or so I really want to appreciate that so thank you so much and just to kind of give a little tidbit it's a little you know I know it's been it's been a lot like you know I have my um I'm, I'm with my I have um my business has increased over the past couple of months the past year or so and having to deal with some transitions and also dealing with um, having to deal with a newborn which is not so much a newborn anymore that newborn is now a full-blown toddler she had just um, little Samantha had just uh, she's about to be turning two years old and guess what she is one and she is destroying everything so um, <laughs> so anyway like just having to deal with some like over so really it's just trying to figure out when would be the best time for me to film and also figuring out what I want to take this channel and what direction do I want to do because it's not as like if anything you start in life you start something then you have gotten on a roll and then and something happens and then you just stop it's kind of hard to pick that back up and then it's like you had to think about what you really want to do with that with that like if you want to keep it or if you want to re have or really just really try and figure out what you want to do with that later so in the in the mean so over during that time I decided that I wanted to take this channel in a different direction. I still, I am still gonna, it's still gonna be a real estate channel. I love talking about real estate and I realized that I just enjoy talking about real estate and just talking about different topics of what buyers and home sellers are thinking about doing or just even consumers just wanted to educate the public as to as to how to move through a transaction and not necessarily talk about okay where I live what's going on in Philly um, what's going on in Delaware why you should move here what's the parks and all that I, I just felt like that just that just wasn't me so I feel like that I'm just more of a of a as, as like a, a real I like to be as real as possible and I really just like talking about different situations and talking about what are what am I seeing in my business what am I seeing and how can I help anybody that is also thinking the same question because guess what just because I I have a call that like you're not you may not be the only person thinking about this there's other people thinking about the same question so our my thing is is that I really just want to answer anybody's questions about real estate and just and even if you may not be thinking about buying real estate in Phil in the Philadelphia area Philadelphia metropolitan area which consists of Delaware and also New Jersey and whatnot I'm not licensed in Jersey but I am licensed in Delaware but I'm working on getting licensed in other states like such as New Jersey and also getting it working on my broker's license in Philadelphia in Pennsylvania so let's get into it so really what is today's topic so today's topic is going to be something that is you probably heard in the news for so long and that is interest rates what are we doing about interest rates and how to na navigate it and just what like interest victoria interest rates are high i want us not buy now because interest rates are so high so i think i'm gonna pause my search so anyway so really that's a great question and that is a very valid concern you're not the only person thinking about that and there are so many people that are also having the same anticipation and, and hesitance in wanting to continue their home search or even start their home search because of the rise in interest rates so how is interest rates harming home ownership so let's get into it so the first thing is to decide is to ask why are interest rates going up interest rates have been low for the past three years of the tw of the 2020s and everything interest rates had been low for years 
and now they're just like they've been really low since 2020 and then now we're at now they're rising why are they rising what is going on so one of the things before we even ask that question is to think about where we were two years three years ago believe it or not three years ago we had the pandemic we had the pandemic covid hit uh, or i should say the big c whatever it hit and all of a sudden we were shut in we were stuck inside our houses we couldn't work we couldn't go to work we couldn't we couldn't um we couldn't go to school we couldn't go to the bars we couldn't go to, to any events we had to be shut in and that mean and literally we had to do everything from our homes we had to be on zoom we had to be we had to order everything online or and we could only go out if we absolutely needed to because of what was going on outside so because of that because we had in 2020 we had to turn our homes where we were you know traditionally we've been going out leaving our houses to go to work driving like up to an hour or more plus her x x amount of time to go to work and then um and then drive back home have to deal with traffic have to deal with errands taking picking up kids if you're a parent or you know having to run errands for family members going to the grocery store we had to go do all that stuff kids they had to go to school they go they went they went to the neighborhood school or even going to college or whatnot or any higher education so they were going into school and then we were just coming home enjoying our houses you know we do our gardening do our tinkering on the weekends hang out and then we go to an event and then we just come home and eat and sleep and we're just relaxed we didn't really but the only thing is is that we had to be in those places because of our job because we had to go to work or go to school so what happened in 2020 pandemic hit march early 2020 march of, of 2020 the issue government said we're in a global pandemic everybody shelter in place so we're stuck home literally overnight the world shut down so it's so guess what we were doing we were going so you know for two weeks people couldn't really figure out what was going on we had to figure it out um we still we worked on zoom we had to go on zoom uh and countless zoom hours and um google meets and whatnot video conferencing um and also guess what schools were shut down and guess what eventually schools start back open but guess what they weren't going to school they were going they weren't going to their school building they were going to school at home so guess what parents had to stay home be with the kids make sure that they're logging in and doing all that fun stuff so I'm still getting I got PTSD just thinking about it but anyway that's what we were doing so we were home so we were all just home just live trying to figure out what was going on but guess what that three bedroom four bedroom house two and a half bath where you have a corner in this and you know having to set up a camera you got kids in the corner like on in the living room having to set up a classroom and we also had to try and get our exercise in make our do try to make sourdough bread whatever the trends was going on back then I don't need to keep going on and on about it. Ultimately, our homes had became our offices. They became our workspaces. They became our restaurants. They became our school, our classrooms. They became our gyms. They became everything. So guess what? People were reevaluating their spaces, and guess what? They people decided to. Hey, if I'm home and I'm going to be working from home, and I don't necessarily need to go into the office. Hey. I'm in New York or I'm in Philadelphia and I don't like the way how prices are and I here I am spending so much money and living in a in a um, in an apartment in a um, three like in a in 900 square foot apartment I don't need to go into work I'm just here because I have to go into work into the city why not I just buy a house in Tennessee somewhere or in Colorado somewhere where the cost of living isn't as high 
buy a house and get more bang for my buck actually have a backyard actually have a basement actually have enough land that I may be able to build a studio build a something a, a something that is away from my house like something to make it more comfortable have more room so that everybody can be able to do what they need to do online so everybody has their 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 rooms that they can have their their classrooms in we can have a bigger kitchen we can do we we have more bathrooms because one bathroom is not cutting it for a family of three you know you need to have an additional bathroom or whatnot it's happening back then so people were reevaluating their spaces and they were making moves they were buying properties and guess what at the time and for a while we were having low inventory but it was a balanced market you had some buyers that were you had buyers that were buying yeah sellers that were selling it wasn't as bad but it was still a low inventory market it's been like that for a while because guess what homes were not really building being built as quickly so now all of a sudden you have all this stimulus coming in and then it's causing people to have to oh hey i'm paying off all my debt i'm staying home why don't we just try and find another place so that's what happened and guess what people were capping onto low interest rates because the low interest rates have went down they went down to two and a half like to three three and a half percent in between 2020 and 2021 and 2022 that people and then you have people going all of a sudden you have all these new buyers surging into the market and basically driving up the prices because you have people that were waving inspection out bidding you have out bid like people bidding a whole bunch of bidding wars you have seller buyers that were basically doing whatever it took to get into that house such as waving appraisals making up the going making up the difference in appraisal differences and gaps doing a whole bunch doing everything that they have to do to get that house and you had a lot of buyers that were because you could only win there's only one winner you can't just have two buyers buying one property you got you, you only gotta have one winner so you have so many people buying all these house like whatever is there and it is driving up the, it, it's driving up the prices because of the low inventory it didn't cost as much money to loan money it was actually cheap to borrow money so you had a lot of rates out there so what was the government doing so now that you have all this stuff it's like a bloodbath you got so many people literally doing this you got rulers like me that were like literally freaking like trying to keep it all together because you're good offers out there people were still losing and they were giving really good offers so needless to say so what was the government going to do so the government decided that hey because we have such a, such such a frenzy and people were doing it we have to in increase interest rates because we need to slow down the market because it was so going so quickly and it was just trying to have the just it's really all about economics it's just to combat inflation because everything went up 2020 and people are now talking about our our I feel like people are starting to talk about because if you go online on TikTok, YouTube, you see people talking about how the prices, grocery prices have just increased. That's nothing new. It's been going up since 2020. Prices have been going up since 2020 because of the pandemic. More expensive now. It's inflation. So we're now in 2023 dealing with inflation and dealing with just higher costs in gas, higher costs in labor, higher costs in, and everything is just high cost more to build about economics so the, so the government in its in its great mind sarcastically but whatever this is what they're doing is they're just doing this as a short as to gradually increase interest rates up over time just gradually just to try and combat inflation and support economic stability stability so that's just what it is in that it's just causing a ripple event uh, effect so that because everything is being affected now so what so now you have a lot of buyers that dropped out the market because it's sticker shock all of a sudden you had interest rates like steadily climbing up okay four percent okay that's still good five eh, five, that's manageable had some people drop off because now they're five but then after six months then people came back because they were like well you know what five is not that bad now you're starting to see six sevens and now we're almost pushing eight 
as of the time of this recording. So it's just, so people are now dealing with sticker shock right now because you have interest, because the interest rates have went up and they're just like, people are just like, you know what, it's too high and the cost of these houses, I can't win. I'm going to just stay where I'm at and, you know, and there's nothing that I can, and we're just not going to buy. We're, we're just going to continue to rent. But what's the problem with that? So I'm not saying that it's a bad problem. Interest rates, yes, that is a concern. Yes, you got to wor worry about your pocket. You got to worry about how your pocket is going to, how you're going to be affected later down the line. And if your interest rates are higher, then how can you, that means it's costing more to spend money and that means you can only afford so much house. So, yes, it's affecting your monthly payment, and it's gonna, it's gonna, um, and yes, it all like just affects everything. It affects affordability. We could talk about that all day, but there's a solution because guess what? Believe it or not, yes, interest rates are higher than they were two, three years ago. Two, three years ago, yes, they are higher. Yes, they're almost, they're practically doubled or tripled than they were, you know, depending on when you last counted. It is, it's, it's relatively speaking, when you really think about it on the, on the bigger scheme of things, this is average. Seven, eight percent is seven percent, six percent is not that bad in the grand scheme of things because it's an average normal interest rate cent is better than if it goes up to like say nine or ten if you get into it and it's going to be better and then even then if so think about it is that okay so say for instance if we do wait um today interest rates are seven percent seven and a half let's just throw that out there not saying that it is just don't using that for example okay seven and a half percent you decide not to, you find a house, you want to buy that house, but that house, but you're not feeling too warm and fuzzy about the interest rate. Okay. You decide, decide that you want to wait. Okay, cool. You want to wait. Okay. So that house comes and gone because somebody buys it. You don't have that house. Interest rates decide to fall. And they say like comes down to maybe like, it comes down like a couple points or whatnot. So now you're like, oh, yes, let's go start looking for a house as I'm ready because interest rates are where I want it to be at. Guess what? That time, because you waited, you could have gotten that, uh, that, other, that house at the time at a higher interest rate and paid what you needed to pay. Wait until when the interest rates come down and guess what? You see another house that you want to buy. And they're like, oh, I like the price. I love it. I want to buy it. The interest rate is great. Say that the interest rate is maybe like four and a half. Guess what? You're putting an offer in and so many other people are putting offers in. Why is that? Because people are waiting. We're waiting for when you were waiting at the same time for interest rates to fall so that you can put, put an offer on that one house. And guess what? Now, instead of competing with one to maybe three people possibly or not competing at all at seven percent and more now with four like five plus people ten people on that same house because the interest rates have fallen so and guess what you're having to overbid and do more have to waive a pray waive certain things so waive inspections waive repairs and whatnot so that you can get that so that you can get that house and guess what you may not get the house because you haven't but somebody else put a better offer than yours so it comes down to competition right now because the interest rates are higher there's not as much competition there's still demand there's still more demand even I'm not saying that there's not competition it's just not as much competition you still you have people that are still competing but it's not as many people as if you were to wait for interest rates to fall and then you have more people and competing on the same house. So if you have 10 people competing on one house, you got 10 multiple bids plus more because you got more people flooding into the, into the market, that price goes up. So you end up paying more or overpaying for the house because all because you wanted the lower interest rate. 
Not to say that lower interest rates are bad, they are good. Yes, we all want a low interest rate, we all want the best price for our house. But, however, you have to think about it in, in the grand scheme of things. Do you, would you rather pay more over pay more for a house? Have to put more into the house. Not get everything that you need because you have to waive certain things because you wanted the lower interest rate. It's not a bad argument, but I'm not trying to say, convince you otherwise. But it's just something to think about. So that's why that's why the it's why the government has increase interest rates the fed the feds have increased interest rates because they're trying to prevent a bloodbath and try and if and trying to slow the housing market down so that we can have economic stability because you can't have because if interest rates go um stay lower or even if they do go lower you're going to have a bloodbath it's going to wreck the economy it's not so much wreck the economy i don't have a crystal ball but you'll have a lot more competition so but anyway there's strategies and there's tips as to how to be able to get your get a better interest rate to, to make your interest rate maybe not there's there's ways to bring down your interest rate and to help pay for that as well as so that you could be able to have the best price so here's some tips to help you with your for home buyers facing rising interest rates so the first thing is start early Start shopping so you can so the first thing that I would say and what I mean by start early meaning you want to talk to two people you want to talk to your trusted real estate resource your real estate professional and a lender why I say both because your realtor is going to be the one that's going to be if you have a really great realtor they're going to be able to tell you hey they're going to walk you through it hey yes these are the concerns but guess what there's ways to get your get your make home ownership a lot more affordable and make it easier to get to get to to combat the interest rate deal because guess what things change you may be saying no i don't want to pay a higher interest rate today but guess what interest rates can come down tomorrow and what i mean by tomorrow i mean years down the line the whole point is get the bricks now you don't have a lot of competition. You don't got anything out. There's not too much competition because there's a lot of people that backed out and really are sitting on the sidelines because of sticker shock. Guess what? I've seen it happen when interest rates started coming up, when it went from like three, four, two, three, four percent to like five, six. People got sticker shock and started to back out because they were like, oh, prices are too high, you know, and interest rates are too high. We're backing out. Okay, fine, no problem. I'm not gonna argue with you. You do what's best for you. Guess what? Interest rates still climbed and home prices still rise. And six months later, those people that were waiting for interest rates to come back down, they realized they weren't coming back down anytime soon. And they wanted to be in a home. So guess what? They decided to they decided to go ahead and restart their search and then they found a house they got in on a good interest rate because guess what there was things that their mortgage professional and their lender was able to work out to help them make their their home or to get their interest rate good and good enough for them because guess what you could buy down the rate you could act and buying down meaning you could put more money down and put and have put um and buy down your rate so that you don't have a higher interest rate so that's a strategy. So if you don't want to pay seven percent, but pay a couple, couple, um, depending on if it if it works and how much it costs, pay a, a couple hundred or a couple thousand dollars more or down on your payment if you're able to, or even get a credit to be a, or a grant or credit from the seller or from a credit uh, um, or from a program, first time home buyer program that can help you save your money and help you buy down your rate so that instead of paying seven percent if that's the figure you're paying more like maybe five or six or something like that so you could do that and they could be able to help you with that or we can have the seller be able to get that to help you buy that buy that down so you want to talk to those two people talk to your mortgage professional 
and as well as to your realtor. But talk to your realtor because they can be able to put you, point you in the right direction with your mortgage professional. And also shop around. Don't judge you just because you go to one person, you don't gotta stick with them. Shop around. This is America. You can shop. Point number two is improve your credit score. Yes, your credit score does affect your ability, does play a part in your mortgage availability to be able to get that mortgage, but it can also bring help you bring down a better interest rate for you. So raise your interest rate and help up your interest rate. And but also talk to your mortgage professional about that as well. Number three, consider fixed rate mortgages. Now, fixed rate mortgages have been around for a while, so I'm not even going to really say because. We all know if it's a fixed rate, it's consistent throughout the whole mortgage process, throughout the life of the loan. You may want to consider adjustable rates. Is yes, I'm not talking about subprime adjustable rates. I'm talking there's safe arms adjustable rate mortgages, and that's where you come and talk to a mortgage professional because then you could have a lower interest rate for a couple of years and then it just ups. So if it adjusts up, you can refinance if it makes sense. Just because you get the loan doesn't mean you have to stay with that loan forever. You can always refinance later. And, but talk to your mortgage professional. Number four, which is something that I've been saying from points one to three, consult a mortgage professional. So that is, and like I said, talk to them because they are able to help and guide you. Find the best person that is able to sh help you structure your budget and help you with putting together that plan so that you can be able to live with that payment. Because guess what? It can, yes, your principal and interest is going to be the same. But guess what? There's other things and other factors that help make your mortgage payment can be either can adjust your mortgage payment to be higher or lower. One of those things is taxes. If you're a first time home buyer or if you live in your primary home, apply for the homestead. The homestead. Apply for that because you will save money on your taxes if you can. If you're a primary homeowner. Is to shop your homeowner's insurance. Homeowner's insurance, they go up just like your, your insurance. It goes up or down. Shop around. And I've had it where it's like my taxes went down because I applied for the homestead. But my mortgage insurance went up. So, yes, I was happy that my taxes went down, but because my mortgage insurance went up, it offset my taxes, my decrease in taxes offset that increase. So, my mortgage payment ended up being like $10 or $20 lower than what it was initial. But you know what? Shop around because there is ways so that you can be able to save money after you get into the house. And and also just being a smart consumer with your budget and just being on top of it so talk to a mortgage professional and number five and final is budget wisely factor in potential rate increases if you go into a house if you're out there shopping talk to your lender and ask them to constantly run you different numbers so that you know how much it's going to cost you to get that loan they, that's what they're there for. They're there. To, they're working with you. We're all working with you. Your real estate agent and your mortgage professional. We're all working together as a team. We're all being partners so that we can be able to help you get to your goal. And we want you to get to your goal where you feel happy and you feel secure about moving forward with the loan and being able to purchase that house and be comfortable with the payments moving forward. So budget for that. Factor in that maybe rates increase or decrease, and also talk about discount points. Talk to your lender about that. Maybe we can and talk to your agent that if maybe your agent can help with structuring the deal that you can get a credit to, from the seller to help and and get some, and what I mean by a credit meaning the seller's assist so that you could be able to help pay down your mortgage loan to pay down your mortgage interest rate and put that towards your rate to buy it down. You can do that. There's options so mainly in closing and I'm gonna close this out is really think about getting the bricks that's all that matters get the bricks to your home get the bricks today and I'm not saying hey I'm gonna start buying a house today buy when you're ready because only you know when you're ready but if you're on the sidelines and you've been like hey I want to buy a house but I'm just like I don't know about these interest rates get the bricks Get the bricks because you can always refinance later. 
there's times that you can do it and you want to do that when it makes sense and guess what it may not be as bad and guess what you don't know unless you ask and that's where I come in or even your mortgage professional I know so many mortgage professionals that have helped so many people and they are amazing so whoever you talk to make sure if you're even if you're not buying in the area but i'm in but even if you were to talk to somebody in your area or in the neighborhood that you're trying to buy go to your more go to your to your real estate agent your trusted real estate professional and they'll be able to put you into the right direction easing in mortgage interest rates can be a concern they shouldn't defer you from pursuing your home and your dreams get the bricks it's fine you can always refinance later. You can always buy down your points. You can always do all that. Be proactive. I always tell my clients, be proactive. We want to be proactive. We want to stay informed, stay educated, and be informed. And that way you can feel empowered to move forward through this process. Because you can still find the home that fits your budget and enjoy it. And enjoy it. Because And, and guess what? Nothing's better than finding the right home and you got the best price. And you're getting the best terms for it. There's nothing that beats that feeling. So, if you find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. I know this has been my first video in a while. Thank you so much. And don't forget to click that subscribe button. It is right there down below in the red button. Click the bell so that you know when I drop the... If you want to talk to me about real estate. If you have interest of even buying, selling, investing, anywhere doing something in real estate, feel free to give me a call doesn't matter if you're looking to buy in Philadelphia but if you like but I know people all throughout the country and that I can be able to help link you up with the best professional so I know a lot of people but anyway regardless if you feel like giving me a call if you feel like sending me an email feel free my information is down below thank you so much I really appreciate that and if you want to I also have other videos um, on this channel to talk about Philadelphia if you're thinking about moving to Philadelphia so again if you ever know anybody that's thinking about moving to Philadelphia or even Delaware feel free to give me a call thank you so much I really appreciate it. and also leave a comment below share your questions and thoughts and comments below and let me know let's get the conversation pop and thank you so much I really appreciate it I would love to hear from you and I help so many people every single day realize their home their home ownership dreams. So thank you so much. Thank you for watching and have a good one. Bye.